I don't understand the question. Uh, yeah, okay, let's get rid of that one. Okay. <laughs> It's Linda. I'm Mark. In case any of you are confused. Um, when did we both become aware of each other? Do you know? I knew about you before I actually met you because there was like a lot of buzz. Mark Jacobs, Mark Jacobs. There's this Mark, Mark. I know where you're going with this. Um, okay. I. I had just got a job at Perry Ellis, which was a big design company here in New York at the time. And um, I knew of you from a photograph that you did with Stephen for American Vogue. And I have to say, you know, I love Stephen's work so much. And I was just looking every single month, like for anything that Stephen did. And there you were. And I got this job at Perry Ellis. And I was like, I want Linda Evangelista to be in our first campaign. And um, you cut your hair. I think we were on a shoot. I showed up, you were there. And Orbe was doing the hair. Mm. Francois was doing the makeup. And they poured a bucket of cold water over your head. And that was the picture. Where was the fashion? We, didn't, we hadn't made any clothes yet. So there, we just did a t-shirt printed that said Very Ellis instead of Perry Ellis. And you were holding it down. And, they and it was before the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> Like it was the original ice bucket challenge. I think it was 87. Yeah, sounds about right. 87, 88, mm -hmm. definitely. And then I did do campaigns. Yes. I did do your show. Yes. And I did meet you. Yeah, yeah. And I understood the buzz. Oh, uh, thanks. And I understood the buzz about you too, because like there was nobody who could go from this to that, like, and just nail it every time. You were like, incredible. And still are. What were the early days of fame like for you? My dream was always, always, well, since the age of 12, to be a model. Like my dream was to be on the cover of Vogue. My dream was to be shot in fashion. My dream was to do fashion shows and to be in magazines. Never in my mind did that include, you know, I want to be famous. I just wanted to be successful. Mm. Yeah, I didn't understand the there's a difference between successful and famous. And the famous part, that was that was hard to come to understand, even for me. And then apparently I said really dumb things like. I won't get out of bed, <laughs> stuff like that, which, you know, in your 20s, I think, well, I'm not going to include you all, but I want to say we all say dumb things in our 20s, but it's not something I would say now, but at the same time, I don't regret it because it was said, you know, tongue in cheek. I was trying to say I know my worth, but I wouldn't quite phrase it that way today. Yeah, I was thought it was kind of a cool and funny thing and offhanded thing to say, but it did it did also make sense, you know, like you you basically were like if I have a job to do, I'll get out of bed to do it, but this is what a job is to me right now. What are your memories of the 90s like? So hard to describe. It was one thing and the next thing you changed it up and made it like all grungy and then I, I was so confused. You were so confused. I was like, how do I fit in here? Well, but that's, I'm really glad you brought that up because you know, one thing, I, I, I don't know how it came up, but I was thinking about like all those incredible images. You were it. It's like, it was the funniest thing. It was No, like I all... wasn't. Kate Moss was. No, Kate was... I get because she was like the Korean thing. But what was funny to me on the outside was like, there were those photographers and they were like, well, Linda works. I had the body type because I was never then curvaceous. I always had kind of that, you know, felt body. So I could adapt in that way. Um, and then yes, they, wor they worked with me. So mm. they all gave me a chance. Mm. 
And I remember there was like all this talk about the demise of the supermodel and we were over and we were finished. And I was like, we are? I was working every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, in 93 was the year they said it was over, that right. it was over for us. And I was on September 1993 American Vogue cover. Uh. So not really. Yeah, and not really. I fit in and I, it felt, I, I liked it. Yeah. And I j actually enjoyed dressing yeah. that way. Yes. It was very exciting. It was an exciting period. Yeah, I mean, and necessary because it was going in such a bedazzled, opulent, <laughs> more is more and more is better way. I think there were a lot of things going on. I mean, for something like that to affect all kind of creativity, it, it happens on the level of art and fashion Pop and culture. film. Yeah, like culture. And um, but you managed. And that's the genius of you. You managed to do it in a luxurious way. Like the fabrics were so beautiful. Yeah. And the textures and the sweaters, they were just so beautiful. It, I think for me at the time, it was the idea of like appreciating and celebrating something beautiful that was never considered beautiful. So like it may feel beautiful, et cetera, or luxurious, but I think it was also just looking at things in a very, very different way. I mean, I remember looking at a skirt length that, you know, two years prior would have been considered dowdy and wrong. And it's like, yeah, yeah. that's what's so nice about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So do you have like an archive of like I clothes? do. I do. So in my mother's home, I claimed the bottom floor. One might call it a basement, but it has windows, <laughs> so I don't think it's a basement. But there's a room in there with all of my work, like the actual magazines, catalogs, brochures. Wow. Um, so the full magazine. Yes. It's all in there. Like 90% oh. nicely organized. And then... There's these cedar closets that I had made in France that move around on wheels and they have the most beautiful clothes in them, some Azadines and Chanel's and nice things that don't fit me. Instead of sitting there, they really need a home and that's a project that I would like to get to. Mm. And then I have my awards. I, my, my mom has all my awards oh. like in a curio cabinet and Nice. I mean, there's not that many. There's, well, I'm sure it's a few. There's a VH one. There's one from Gorbachev. There's, there, there's like a few awards. Nice. How about you? As a company, we keep uh, most of the collections that I've done recently in an mm -hmm. archive. And I think Michael, who does the press, kept like all the press books, tear sheets, I think is tear what we sheets. used to call them, mm -hmm. tear sheets. And I think we have old VHS copies of fashion shows that have never been transferred. You better hurry up and get those transferred, transferred. because there's like... They'll dissolve. Probably one company left that will... We'll do it. I know that coming out of a documentary. Oh, I was going to say, when... You know, when my Perry Ellis career was over after the grunge collection, and they were like, bye, see ya. Uh, <laughs> I started doing, you know, I had like, we started up our own company and you did that first show. In fact, Christy came in and she was like, I'm not doing runway ever again, but for you, when you're ready, I'll come back. How many and, times did she say? That? Well, that was the first time the first she time actually she said that, yes. Okay. She, yeah. She, yeah, she said it a few times. Like she came back for me recently, you know, yes, whatever. She did. Thank God. But, but I was going to say is that early on in my career post Perry Ellis, I couldn't afford to pay anybody, so I gave you and the others clothes. You Thank know, and God. That was, no, but that was that. No, so, so I didn't save anything. So it, there's no oh, archive of that period. I can give you back those pieces. <laughs> <laughs> if I you think got I anything, have, I think I have the yellow rubber coat. Do you? I think it's I probably do. like. Dissolve, like, I don't know how. I don't know. It's in the cedar closet. Well, if you find it, 
Mm. I wonder if cedar and rubber really. <laughs> but if you if you come across it and you've Whatever got nothing. Whatever state it's in, it'll be good. <laughs> it might be melted. <laughs> Not in Canada. It's in Canada. Oh. It didn't. It's melt. cold? Yeah. Cold. Okay. So, um, all right, I'm, I skipped this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. What, what does it mean to have a friendship like ours in this business? It's precious. It's precious. I mean, I turned to you during uh, COVID when we initially all got into lockdown. It was so scary. Mm. We've lost so many people in our industry. I mean, going through the 80s, I was around for like 85 on, and that was a scary time. I lost my first uh, booking agent to AIDS, and I don't know, we just have lost so many people, and we've lost, and how many designers have we lost? And hairdressers and makeup artists and photographers and I don't know I as time goes by I just try to hold on as much as I can to my real friends and it's hard to make real friends in this business and you know a, a lot of it's fleeting and we don't live in the same place and we're all moving around and flying and jet setting and crossing paths and it takes a real commitment to remain friends. But what's great is when you do make a real friend, even if you don't see each other for a while, when you reconnect, nothing is lost. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you completely. I remember very well during the pandemic and we were in that like group chat conversation and you know, and it was, it was really special, I thought, to, you know, kind of reconnect with you because I hadn't seen you or spoken to you or heard from you in a while. And I always remembered your Christmas parties. And so, you know, there was like that whole, I think during that period where I just went back in time and think, oh, I missed this and I missed that and I missed this. And yeah. Okay. Well, that was a really beautiful answer, Linda. And this is why I love him. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you.